Uh, my name is Gary Secor. I am a plant pathologist at North Dakota State University, and I'm with my colleague, Dr. Julie Pesci, who is a potato pathologist at North Dakota State University yes. as well. Yes. And we work together on lots of potato diseases, and we're delighted to be here at this virtual presentation because of the pandemic and all the things that are going on. I think the first thing we need to do is thank our staff that does all this great field work. Russ, Russell and Dean and Corey and Daryl, we've got a great crew, and our field trials look just wonderful this year because of their hard work. Yeah, it's too bad you can't be here to see them, but um, they're doing fantastic work as they always do. And we need to thank our cooperators that work with us on all these trials. Heimbuck Farms, Northern Plains Potato Growers, Area 2, uh, Carl Hoverson, whose field we're in now, Black Gold, RDO Farms. Um, Minnesota Area 2 Potato Growers, yeah. and hopefully we didn't miss anybody, but sorry if we did. We've got a great <laughs> field crew, we've got a great group of cooperators, so thank you to all of those. Um, so we've got some, we're going to talk about two different groups of diseases here today. We're going to talk first about foliar diseases above ground, and then we're going to talk about the work that we've been doing with below ground uh, parts of pathology. So, so Gary, you, um, you've been working on late blight for years. What can you tell us about your work with late blight? You know, late blight this year, it's, it's, thanks to the good work that the industry does, I think, and I give them the credit. Absolutely. Because they have to implement the management practices. Yep, yep. So far, we have no late blight in North Dakota, in Minnesota, or Manitoba. And this is as of Wednesday, the, what, the 12th of August? Is that where we are? Close enough. Yeah, the 8th of August <laughs> or the 8th of August. So the 8th of August, we have no late blight in our area, okay? But we do have late blight reported in Wisconsin uh, on about the 10th of August. Late blight was reported in uh, Adams County in Wisconsin. It's also been uh, uh, late blight in British Columbia. Okay. And also, yes. Uh, uh, yeah, so in British Columbia, and there was one more place that I can't remember now. Okay, but I don't know. Anyway, okay. we don't have any late blight, so I nope. give the credit to the industry for. for <laughs> keeping light blight under control. Absolutely, and and of course, we expect our, our growers will continue to stay vigilant on that effort. I think so, and we have spore traps. We have spore traps that uh, Andy is leading up, heading up those, and uh, we've detected spores, but um, yeah, due to your good work, we haven't, uh, haven't had any in the field. We've also got a lot of trials going with early blight, and I think, Julie, I'd like to ask you to talk about some of those sure, trials sure. that have gone with yeah. early blight. Yeah, so as in the past, um, we've done uh, many trials on early blight, and, and really I think both of us together look at, at um, uh, controlling our foliar diseases of potatoes as a complex. And so maybe we do you know, trials aimed at early blight or other things, but we're really looking at that program approach, helping our growers across the growing season, not just for one disease. And so um, certainly we've uh, continued to do that with early blight, but also this year we've added in um, some brown spot work. And uh, brown spot is uh, caused by a relative of, of early blight, but there are, we know that there are differences in, um, certainly there are differences in symptomatology, but there are also differences in cultivar susceptibility. And what we're coming to find out is that there are differences in the fungicides and the way the fungicides um, control these, these diseases. Sure. We know that, um, uh, early or brown spot in our area is caused by three uh, pathogens and even amongst those brown spot pathogens we know that fungicide and cultivar susceptibility differs and so we're starting to take a little bit closer look at that and um, and as well as fungicide resistance amongst all those all those pathogens and so um, really kind of broadening that that scope of our foliar disease management um, package will you say and, and of course black dot is included in that as well and so um, you know growers want more information on on those trials and all of that information of course will be disseminated at the end of the growing season when we have more more results sure, and, and this, all those trials. And, and this is one of the sites for the fungicide trials yeah, that, yeah. that we're doing. Yep, yep. And, and this is a great example of a complex of diseases. Here, um, just right in front of us, we have a, a combination of both early blight and botrytis, and, and really is quite difficult to tell the difference between them. Um, you know, the lesions are a little bit different, um, and, and but right here amongst this, uh, you can see that we have both we have both pathogens, and and both diseases. Yeah, this is interesting because you can see these small little lesions, 
for brown spot on here that are scattered throughout the leaves as opposed to? As opposed to botrytis that we see here coming in at the end of the leaves and um, typically comes in there as well as in the hydathodes. Yep. And um, where your, your early blight lesions um, tend to remain smaller and more mm -hmm. angular mm -hmm. and where the brown spot lesions tend to expand. And um, so just important for the growers to really uh, be able to distinguish among those and to plan their foliar fungicide program. And it's important, yeah, exactly, because they, they have different fungicides to control the different diseases. Yep. So it's important to identify which ones they are in order to get the right fungicide. Absolutely. So um, please let us know if you have questions, specific questions about these things. We're always happy to answer those and um, work with you on, on your programs going forward. Um, anything else, Gary? No, just if you've got samples that you need to identify. Absolutely. Send us samples. Give us calls. Yep. We're available. Yep. Thank you. Mm -hmm.